Godzilla vs. Kong's Mecha Godzilla is the fourth official live action version of the character, and like its predecessors, has quite the lethal arsenal of weapons at its disposal. Mecha Godzilla made its debut in 1974's Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla, and returned in 1975's Terror of Mecha Godzilla, 1993's Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2, 2002's Godzilla Against Mecha Godzilla, and 2003's Godzilla Tokyo SOS, and had a cameo in Ready Player One before returning in Godzilla vs. Kong. There are differences and similarities between this one and previous versions, so let's see just what they are. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Elliott with Screen Rant, and here are all of Mechagodzilla's powers in Godzilla vs. Kong, and how they compare to those in Toho's earlier films. Yes, Robo Godzilla. No, that's Mechagodzilla. Apex's mechanical titan has a remarkable amount of firepower, and similar to rockets fired by Toho's Mechagodzilla, this one bombarded Godzilla with shoulder missiles, which were mildly effective against him. Many versions of Toho's Mechagodzilla had jet thrusters that allowed it to fly and escape when things got a little out of hand. The new Mechagodzilla might not be able to fly, but it does have jets, and instead of using them to put distance between it and its opponents, it uses them to add an extra boost to its attacks. In the past, speed has not been one of Mechagodzilla's strong suits, and thanks to these thrusters and a larger reach, Godzilla vs. Kong seems to have fixed the speed issue. See that place? They're making a robot. Yeah, and it's gonna kick Godzilla's butt. Cool. cool. The Millennium Era Mecha Godzilla, also known as Kiryu, was the only one that could use its tail for offensive purposes. But Kiryu's tail did not have a scary drill at the end of it like the one this Mecha Godzilla tried to use against Godzilla and Kong. It came close to taking out Kong with it, but Josh pouring alcohol on Mecha Godzilla's control panel was apparently just what they needed to stall its systems long enough for Kong to break free. But seriously, I know we're talking about a movie with giant apes and sentient lizard robots, but taken down by a spilled drink? Come on. Yeah, that's really? stupid. Oh, I'm sorry, D. Well, then I guess Jaws 4 is stupid, okay? Now, arguably, this Mechagodzilla's strongest weapon is its red laser beam, which it first used to impressively split a skull crawler in two. But while Mechagodzilla does usually have some sort of energy beam in the Toho films, like the Absolute Zero Cannon or the Triple Hyper Maser Cannon, those are traditionally chest mounted, whereas in Godzilla vs. Kong, the beam comes from its mouth, much like Godzilla's own atomic breath. And what's crazy is that there aren't many things in the franchise that are stronger than atomic breath, but that was clearly not the case this time around. Mechagodzilla won't come online! Atomic breath detected! It's going to hit! Mechagodzilla killing that skull crawler made it clear it was pretty powerful right from the start. But what made it dangerous enough to go toe to toe with Godzilla and win was the mysterious life force that Dr. Lin's team in Apex found in the Hollow Earth, which, as it turned out, is the same atomic power that lives within Godzilla. And Godzilla's inability to beat Mechagodzilla largely stemmed from it using that energy in close combat. Normally, getting too close to Godzilla would be a bad move, but this Mechagodzilla was able to charge up its attacks, which Godzilla just couldn't compete against. Maybe if he had just shoved a tree down Mechagodzilla's throat, the fight would have been over a lot sooner. Apparently, there's enough footage to make a five-hour version of the movie, so maybe there are even more Mechagodzilla powers that we haven't even seen yet. And if previous films are any indication, just because its head got torn off doesn't mean it can't come back, so don't count out the clanging kaiju just yet. We'll be here to let you know about the next chapter of the MonsterVerse, so make sure to keep coming back to us to stay in the loop. I'm Greg Elliott, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.